We're now going to talk about the grade 11 hyperbola. So the reason I say grade 11 hyperbola is in grade 10 you did do the hyperbola, but there's a slight change in grade 11. Hyperbolas are identified by having the x variable in the denominators of the equation as shown below. So that over there is a standard hyperbola with the x at the bottom and so we know it's a hyperbola. So a graph that looks like that, or a graph with that equation, sorry, would look as follows. Notice that it always comes in pairs of two. So the two halves will either be in these two quadrants or in these two quadrants. To determine w whether it is in the red or in the blue, you have to look at this number over here. If that number is positive, then it is where the red crosses are. And if that number is negative, then it is where the blue crosses are. Now, we could modify that equation by trying to shift it vertically. That'll be done as follows. Notice you can see we've got an equation now that says y is equal to 2 over x plus 3. So just like with the parabola, that plus 3 has the effect of moving the hyperbola upwards. Once it has moved upwards, it'll be shown, well, once it's moved upwards, it will look as follows. Notice how we can see that that hyperbola has shifted three places upwards. Notice the dotted line. We're going to talk about that now. So hyperbolas are the is the type of graph that has two asymptotes. Now remember there was a section when we were talking about parabolas where we said that asymptotes are lines that get in the way. And we can see that this line as well as this line going down here, so that's a bit skew, those two lines that I've highlighted, those get in the way of that graph, all right? So those are the asymptotes. A hyperbola has two of them. So if you shift this graph three units upwards, well then the asymptote is also going to move three units upwards. We have not shifted the graph horizontally or to the left and right, and so this asymptote stays as it is. Notice that you always draw the graph with respect to where the two asymptotes intersect. So we draw it over here and over here. It's got nothing to do with this area over there anymore because that is not where your two asymptotes intersect. The last thing that I would like to quickly talk about is a horizontal shift and then we'll go on to some examples. So the nice thing about graphs is that they all have the same similarities. So this over here, as we saw, shows a vertical shift. And then when we near the x values, think about what we did with the parabolas. Whenever you went near the x values, that was for the horizontal shift. And then something that we had to remember with horizontal shifts was that it's always opposite to what you would think. So minus 4 is actually going to shift the graph 4 units to the right. And so notice how I have shifted the new asymptote to the right. And so this asymptote equation is going to be x equals to 4. And the other asymptote, as we saw in the previous example, is going to be y equals to 3. And then we can draw the, parab um, the hyperbola. Sorry. Remember that we always draw it with respect to where the two asymptotes intersect. We're going to do it in these two quadrants because of the fact that this number over here is a positive, and so we can draw the graph and draw the graph. Of course, we don't know exactly where these intercepts are, but we are going to practice that in the next couple of examples. For now, we are just getting used to the idea of how each part of the equation plays a role in what the graph looks like. In these examples, all we're going to do is do rough sketch graphs of where the graph would be located. We're not going to worry about exact x or y intercepts. That is for the next example. Now we're just going to get used to how each part of the equation affects what the graph looks like. So we'll start with number one. With number one, we can see, let's, have a, let's analyze each part. This part tells us that it's in the 
two red quadrants. This part tells us that the graph has moved four units up. So let's go draw that asymptote. There we go. So to try to keep it neat, I'm going to do the asymptotes in red. And then I'll, we'll put the equation of that asymptote. And so there we have our two asymptotes. And now we can simply draw the graph. And once again, we don't know exactly where these intercepts are. But that we're going to practice in the next section. For now, we're just getting used to the positioning of the graph. Let's do number two. We'll analyze, analyze each part. So this part here tells us that it's in those quadrants. This part here tells us that the graph has moved four units down. And this part here tells us that it's moved one unit to the left. So let's start by locating our asymptotes. This means the graph has moved four units down and so there will be a horizontal asymptote four units down. The graph has also moved one unit to the left, remember, because plus means it's moved to the left. And now we can go draw our two graphs. Let's quickly locate the point where the two asymptotes intersect. And if you can remember, we said that it's going to be in this quadrant and that quadrant. And so we simply draw our graphs like that. Notice how we're not even paying attention to this line anymore or this line. We're simply drawing it about the red axis for now. Of course, what we would have to find, those points, which is your original x-axis intercept, and this point over here, which is your original y-axis intercept. But that will do in the next part of this video. So that is the end of this question. Now let's go to number three. So let's analyze number three. This number here tells us which quadrants we are in, which I'm sure by now you understand that it's these two quadrants. So I'm going to remove that for now. Then there is no plus or minus here. So that means the graph has not moved up or down. This x plus 1 tells us that the graph has moved one place to the left. Remember, the way that we know that this means the x values is because it's next to the x value. So that's telling you that the x values have been shifted one place to the left. So we can go draw our asymptote for that one. And now all that we have to do is draw the two halves in the correct quadrant. So we said that it was going to be on that side and that side. And so we simply draw. And then we should also add the equation of the asymptote, which I forgot to do. And that will be the end of that one. So now we're going to go ahead to the next slide and where we're going to do some proper examples. So to correctly draw a, a hyperbola, you want to locate your asymptotes, both the horizontal and the vertical asymptote. And then you want to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And that's all that you need to draw a hyperbola. We'll start with number one. We'll start with the asymptotes. So Try to ask yourself, what does that mean? It means that the graph has moved one place up, and so there will be an asymptote. So you can imagine this asymptote over here is also going to move up. We can't say that this purple one is going to move up. That one only moves left and right, and that's why it's the green one that is going to move up. And so its new location will be as follows at y equals to 1. Then we go look at the horizontal shift, which that's next. That's That horizontal means x values. And there it is. Remember, with horizontal shifts, it's always opposite to what you would think. So x minus 5 actually means 5 units to the right. And so we can go locate that asymptote. A nice thing to do is then to locate the point where the two asymptotes intersect, and then to know whether you should draw the graph over here and here, or over there and over there. That is simply due to this number. If that number is positive, then it's where the two black arrows are. But first, we need to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Due to the fact that, okay, this one's fairly easy to draw, so I can draw this one so long, something like that. This one, is going to do something like that, but it might, I doubt it for this one, but it could also do something like that. So you need to know 
where or of the intercepts are. So let's do that first. So to find x-intercepts, you make y equal to 0. You can then take the plus 1 to the left-hand side. To get that x minus 5 to the left, we will have to multiply it with the minus 1. We then multiply the minus 1 into the bracket and then solve for x. And then we can go and locate that x-intercept value of 3. Now we are in a position to locate the y-intercept. To do that, you make x equal to 0. If you had to go plug that on your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 3 over 5, which is the same as 0, 6. And so that's your y-intercept. My y-intercept coordinates are slightly higher than the value, just for a bit of, just to make some space. We can now draw the graph. And there is the graph. Now we can go to number. The first step for number 2 would be to locate the asymptotes. So this plus 2 over here tells us that the graph has moved two units up and so there will be a horizontal asymptote. So although the graph is moving vertically, we call this line a horizontal asymptote because it goes horizontally. Always remember to give your asymptote an equation. This x minus 3 means that the graph has moved three units to the right and so the asymptotes are complete. Let's now do the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we start by making y equal to 0. We then move the plus 2 to the left, where the plus 2 becomes a negative on the left-hand side. The next step is to multiply the x minus 3 with the minus 2. Then we can multiply the minus 2 into the bracket. We can then solve for x and get an answer of. We can now locate the x-intercept on the x-axis. 3 over 2 is the same as 1 and a half. Our next step is to find the y-intercept by making x equal to 0. And if you type that on your calculator, you get an answer of y equals to 1. And so we can locate that point on the diagram. And now we can draw the hyperbola. Notice that it's usually only one of the halves where which has x and y-intercept. Sometimes it's both. But don't worry if you haven't really done anything with this one over here. Just make sure that it goes next to this red line and next to that red line. Then it's all okay. Notice that by putting the correct x and y intercepts and the correct asymptotes, it automatically positions your hyperbola in the correct quadrants. And you don't have to worry about whether it should be in this one and this one or this or these two. It'll automatically happen if you do it correctly. Let's start with number 3. We'll start by locating the asymptotes. So we can see that this graph has moved 3 units down, which means that the asymptote has also moved 3 units down. This x plus 1 means that the graph has moved one place to the left. Okay, the next step would be to do the x-intercepts, where we start by making y equal to 0. We then move the 3 to the left, where it became positive on the left-hand side. The next step would be to multiply the 3 with the x plus 1. We can then multiply the 3 into the bracket and then solve for x to get an answer of minus 2 over 3. So we can go locate that on the diagram. Minus 2 over 3 is about negative 0, 67. I've placed that minus 2 over 3 and 0 just next to that black dot. It's not for the red line. It's for, it's for this black dot over there. The next step is to get the y-intercept. To do that, we make x0. And if you had to put that on the calculator, you're going to get an answer of minus 2. We can then locate that on the diagram. Now remember, when you draw the graph, it can only ever be, so we should always know where the intercept of the two asymptotes, it can either be there and there, or there and there. But if you've done your x and your y-intercepts correct, it's pretty easy to know that it's going to be the two blue arrows because the two red arrows, if we had to draw it in those quadrants, we would never get to intercept those two dots. And so we can go and draw our graph, make sure that they go along the red line. So along the red line, turn slightly to go along that red line. And then on this side, it'll be something like that. Let's go to the last question. And now we can start with the last question. Our first step is to locate the asymptotes. 
So we can see this minus 4 means the graph has moved 4 units down. This x plus 1 means that the graph has moved one place to the left. And so those are your two asymptotes. The next step would be to locate the next step would be to locate the x-intercept. And to do that we start by making y equal to 0. We can then move the minus 4. In fact, for this one we would probably want to move the minus 1 over x plus 1 to the left because it's negative. So we'll move that to the left. There's many ways of doing it, but that's one of the ways. We then multiply the x plus 1 with the minus 4. Then we can multiply the minus 4 into the bracket. And if you then solve for x, you're going to get an answer of negative 5 over 4, which is the same as minus 1, 25. So it's slightly to the left of minus 1. The next step is to find the y-intercept, which we do by making y equal to, no, x equal to 0, sorry. Plug that in on your calculator, you're going to get an answer of y equals to negative 5. So we go plot that point on the y-axis. So negative 5 is somewhere over there. And then we can draw the graph. So we know it must go along the red line, cut through there to go along that red line. And then this one just cuts there and goes down like that. And that is the end of this video.